All right. So the last thing I'm going to mention is that ultrasound can also be performed using a number of different mediums. I showed you with the ultrasound gel already. There are also little packets that you can get that have a, um, a conducting gel inside of it um, that's reusable. So that's one thing that you can use. You can also use a you know, little plastic bag filled with, with water if it's an area. If you, let's say you only have a sound head that's this large, but you need to get a specific knuckle or something like that. Um, in order to increase the, the, uh, the conductance between the sound head and that smaller or irregular area, you can use one of those little packets filled with fluid to make sure that you're not losing that, that conductivity. Um, the other thing that you can use, <laughs> sorry, my lights are flickering. Um, the other thing that you can use is you can also do this um, before or after uh, potentially an, a whirlpool treatment. So you can use the ultrasound head underwater and that way the water is conducting, uh, you're using the water as a conducting, conducting agent rather than using a gel or, or lotion or something like that. Um, they do, however, recommend that if you are doing it underwater um, to increase the intensity by about a half a point. So if you're if you're uh, doing an intensity of 1.5, if you're doing that same, uh, um, if you're going for the same thing underwater, you're gonna increase that to a 2.0. Most machines uh, go up to, the highest you're ever really gonna use is about a 2.5. Um, once you get up to a 10, and I'm not sure, yeah, these go up to 10, that's where you can actually start getting some tissue damage. So you're gonna wanna stay away from that. Um, but yeah, for the most part, most people are gonna range um, between 0.5 and 2.5. Um, again, we'll talk more in lecture about when those intensities are appropriate or what, for what pathologies. So the last thing I'm gonna show you before we're, we're done with lab um, is how to test your ultrasound head. It also is a good, uh, thing to show patients if anyone ever questions what you're doing. Um, you'll get a lot of patients that don't feel it, especially if we're going for a non-thermal effect of the ultrasound. Um, and just because they can't feel it doesn't mean it's not working, um, especially because a lot of the tissues that we're trying to hit, heat up, those, those uh, deeper tendons, scar tissue, things like that, they don't have the nerve endings that are gonna pick up on this sort of heat. Um, so a lot of people may have some questions. So two in one right here, uh, two for one, we're going to test our ultrasound head and also show our patients exactly what's happening inside of the, the cellular fluid. So what you're gonna do is you're going to um, set your power and your frequency here um, and just give it a minute it's worth of time. You'll pour a little bit of water onto that sound head. Okay, and with that water on there, I'm gonna hit the start button and you can see that it's bubbling. Now that bubble, it's, it's, it's not superheating that water. I can touch it. It's a little warm, but it's not boiling the water. Um, but yes, you can see here as well, it's a good illustration of that uh, effective radiating area towards the edge. You don't get any of it. You get a spike in intensity towards the middle of the ultrasound head, which is where that piezoelectric crystal is. So um, just a couple of teachable moments right here. And you'll notice over time that uh, the water is getting, the amount of water is getting smaller and smaller because it is creating energy there and evaporating just a little bit. Um, so yeah, there's your intensity and just out of curiosity, just to show you guys real quick, let's put a little more water on there. There's a one megahertz. There's a switch to two megahertz. You can see that those cavitations, those bubbles, oops, let's start this again. Oops, let me try one more time. Okay. With a two megahertz, you can see that those bubbles are still there, but they're a little smaller and not so spiked. So that tells you that it's not going as deeply as the one megahertz. And then when we get down to the three megahertz, same thing. It goes a little bit, the, the bubbles are a little bit more shallow, but back to the one megahertz and we get those big bubbles, those deeper ones, not quite as heated. So if we were to switch to a duty cycle, a 
you can see how we get nothing for a few seconds and then it comes on and you can see how that spread is a little bit bigger uh, between those bubbles than than just the or than the continuous ultrasound which is right there so that is all for uh, ultrasound lab I hope you've enjoyed it um, bye